I showed you what I'm doing with the peaks on the house, so now I'm going to show you what I, how I'm going to take care of these windows. So let's get started on this first one. And this is the window we're going to be doing. First, I'm going to make a uh, framework out of the inch and a half by 16th aluminum. And I'll pop rivet it together, and then I'm going to mount it in the window. Uh, once I've got that taken care of, then we'll add the lights to it. So let's get Here's the framework that I've built for that window. It's going to go right inside of the brick. Before, I had clips that I had to jam down into the cracks around the window. But this is just going to be right up against the brick on the outside edge. The top of it looks straight right there at the moment because... Uh, I left it that way so that when you put it in the window, it actually has a spring force then that forces it out against the sides, and that'll help to hold it in place. Plus, I'm going to put a few screws in uh, right into the uh, mortar joints just to hold it in place. You can see there's four places on here where I've pop riveted it together. Two on each side at the bottom, and two on each side at the top there. The pieces of metal I was able to buy from a local uh, process and development uh, business were six foot. And I was able to get them for like a dollar eighty a foot to where the big box stores we're uh, charging me about two and a quarter a foot. So there's quite a bit of savings. So I bought 50 pieces. Now they're only six foot pieces instead of eight foot, but they'll, I'll make do for that kind of a savings per foot. So now that it's, uh, the framework is finished, you can see also Two places at the bottom and two places at the top. I've put a small eighth inch hole in. This is where I'm going to screw it into the mortar joints. When the frame was finished, I uh, marked it where the mortar joints were and then drilled the holes and then drilled the uh, mortar joints. So I'll show you what the mortar joints look like now. I'm going to drill these holes with a battery powered hand drill with a 3 uh, masonry bit on it. Now the masonry bit will go through that mortar like butter. So you don't want to drill too deep but you want deep enough for these anchors. They're just little plastic anchors. You just slide it in and then when you put your screw in it expands the anchor and tightens it inside the hole. Now, I would suggest when you take your lights down at the end of the year that you uh, put the screw back in. That'll keep water from getting down in there and expanding and possibly cracking your mortar. So just put the screw back in after you uh, take your lights down. Well, near as I can figure, everything is ready to go now, so I'm going to put the lights on it. I'll be using the square ones on the surface mount. Uh, I have to use the round ones up on the peaks. That's the simplest way to go. And they're actually a little cheaper than the square ones, even though they're both the same light and operate exactly the same. They're just the way they're a different shape is all. So let's get the lights on it. There's my frame. It's finished now. The lights are all installed. So now I'm going to put it up in the window. That window. And I'll take a picture as soon as I get it up in there. I managed to weld together a couple of stands here that I'm going to mount these boxes on. I don't want anything permanently mounted to the house. And I didn't want to just put it on a stake because come November, that ground's will all be frozen. I can just carry these out and set them there upside the house. I'm going to mount these cable guard 1500 boxes on them. The box itself, I've simply drilled a hole up there on each side, 
Same with the uh, crossbar here. I've got matching holes there. I'm going to mount one on each side. This particular box, I've got my D-Link Ethernet switch uh, mounted in here. So I'm going to put it up on the post now. My two power supplies. I simply cut four pieces of this 16th inch, inch and a half wide aluminum and drilled them and then pop riveted them together and screwed my two uh, power supplies onto them. And now this will just drop right down in that cable bo guard box and uh, screw it in. So let's go ahead and put everything together here and I'll show you what the finished product looks like. This box is now complete. These are my uh, 12 volt leads, DC current, going over to the opposite side from the power on the two sides here for the box. That way, one and two are on one power, three and four are on the second one. My D-Link for my uh, Ethernet connections, you can see that's just a piece of aluminum I put in there, put a couple screws in it. It just fits on, if I can find the holes, and slides down. The little transformer that operates it, I'm going to put inside this box, and I'll run the extension cord for it up inside. That way I don't have to worry about this transformer getting wet. I've had them crack on me before. So that's this side of the box. So let's turn it around. You can also see down here is my power cord for my transformers. Just got it wrapped around there for the moment just to keep it out of the way. On the power side, I've got uh, 120 volt coming in, jumpering it over from one to the second one, and then I've got my power leads, the 12 volt coming out of here and going over to the control board. So there's a hot and a negative here, positive and a negative here. And that's really all there is to this. So this box is done. So let's move on to the next thing. Yeah, here's what the window looks like now. These are just some random effects that I put on a sequence just to see how it looked. So, let's move on. We'll start on the, uh, the windows uh, on the sides of the house that are uh, vinyl instead of brick. So, we'll see how we can get one of those uh, lit up. 